Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to see you. So we're going to continue on with our class in suffering, our study in suffering. I hope the class is not suffering. Uh, however, uh, something that, uh, you know, it, it's an uh, easy topic to make uh, light of, but suffering is, is a painful thing. And I hope we... Uh, hope we grasp that. I mean, sometimes we don't appreciate uh, other people that, what they're going through, and, um, you know, when, when we're suffering, you know, it, and it hits home like that, um, okay, it's easier to, to grasp what God's talking about when He talks about suffering. And <clears throat> if this study, uh, for me, did... Uh, well, it revealed a lot of places in Scripture where God talks about suffering, and I didn't, I didn't realize that it was such a prominent uh, topic in Scripture. And uh, so, are we supposed to be suffering? What, what are, uh, just a little bit of a review, what, are, what should our reaction be when we have visualized that we're suffering or we feel like we're suffering? What should our reaction to that be? Joy. Okay. All right, joy. All right, um, I, why don't I give you two choices? Should we uh, search for relief or should we uh, search for Word I'm looking for, it's it's in there somewhere. Uh, some, uh, I'm sorry. That's a good. That was a good guess. That's not the word I was looking for. If you were closer, you could look in there and and see it. Uh, it's uh, anticipation uh, of what might happen. In other words, uh, it's a poss a possibility looking for a possibility of uh, something that God would want to do. And, and unfortunately, I, f I believe that most of the time we, we look for relief. And um, the thing of it is, we're, we, are, we live in, a, uh, in this world in which there is suffering. And there is going to be suffering as a result of what? Sin, okay, sin is the, is the problem, isn't it? And we live in a place where sin is, okay, I'll say it, is predominant. I mean, if you check, if you, if you won't pay attention to the news, pay, really pay attention to most anything, uh, sin just drips all over the place. And anyway, to, if we can get to the point where where we realize that God wants us not to seek relief, but really to seek Him. Opportunity is the word I was looking for. To seek an opportunity rather than seeking relief. Okay, what this thing that I'm suffering with, okay, there's an opportunity there. And um, so this, this past week, did anybody, well, no, I'll give you more uh, wiggle room. Did anybody, this year, have you seen an opportunity in, suff in suffering that you've done? Have you seen an opportunity? Okay. So I got some, saw some heads reluctantly nodding. Not, not several. Okay, you're not going to get called on to, to describe the suffering you went through and what that was, but so um, what would be, uh, we'll do it this way, what would be some opportunities that, that we could have as a result of suffering? What opportunities does God want us to take advantage of in suffering? Or maybe some that you've experienced yourself. Okay, so so you can so you can have empathy, 
and you can be an encouragement to someone who has suffered in a manner similar to what you have suffered, right? So, has anyone ever suffered as a result of sharing the gospel? Suffered having done that, uh, or uh, oh, okay. So we were uh, uh, okay. The high school uh, class that I was in, those guys, uh, the people that are still walking, are um, they gather once a month. Okay, I, that was not planned. Uh, and so we uh, get, get together and eat, and uh, so I'm, th- I'm thinking, okay, is this, I'm not suffering at the moment, but is this an opportunity to, uh, to you know, talk about Jesus? And so one of the guys was talking about where he lived, and he, he was describing the church that he lived close to. Okay, so tell, tell me a little bit about, uh, okay, uh, I've heard of that organization. Tell me a little bit about, and he was describing the church, and I said, well, uh, wh- what do they uh, talk about as far as how to get to heaven? I mean, what is the belief of that organization? And so uh, it was the gospel, and then uh, you know, you live right. So you believe the gospel and live right. And so <clears throat> somebody started talking about, well, no, you know, I mean, what if you don't live right? And, uh, and then somebody suggested, well, maybe you, maybe living right is not a way to maintain your salvation. And um, so Cindy kind of slid back so that I could so that I could communicate with the guy on the other side of her and across the table. And uh, next thing you know, there's a couple of guys over here and they're talk, you know, the uh, we got now we've got two conversations going. And uh, she said, I think you lost your audience. Okay. So uh, That wasn't an event for suffering, really, was it? But but I thought, you know, that's. I mean, I hated that it had turned out that way. I didn't. Uh, but anyway, it was it was good to to be able to to talk talk about Jesus with uh, some people. And today we're going to get into uh, some examples in Scripture of suffering. Who do you, can you name somebody in the New Testament other than Jesus that uh, would be a good character study of somebody who suffered, somebody who suffered a lot? Uh, okay, Paul. That's not who we're going to talk about. But I, no, that was good. That was, no, I wasn't. Huh? Mary, that, no, we're not going to talk about her either. Okay, we're going to talk about Peter today. Unless something changes between now and then. But let's have a word of prayer before we uh, get started. And uh, I know you guys know uh, are aware that uh, Joey's had some surgery, some, okay, some high-octane surgery, uh, some significant surgery. And uh, the prediction is that he will be suffering with the uh, recovery from that for some period of time. So... Uh, and uh, at, yes, yes, that's true, that's true. So let's have a word of prayer and uh, pray for our time together this morning. Father, thank you for your great love for us and uh, reminding us of how much you care about us. And uh, Father, that uh, because we belong to you, God, we have great privilege to uh, to walk with you and uh get to know you better. Father, I pray that our time this morning as we fellowship with each other and with you uh, around uh, your spirit and around your word, God, that uh, that we would be attentive uh, to what you have to say to us. God, we want this time to be honoring to you. 
Now, Father, we pray for uh, Joey as he's recovering. We thank you that the surgery went well, according to the doctors. It uh, couldn't have gone any better. We thank you for that. And uh, we look forward to uh, his recovery. Pray for that. And uh, pray for the family, Father, that they would be at peace as uh, this process continues for his healing. And just thank you that we can, we can talk to you, Father. Thank you for reminding us to listen to you. We look forward now to what we're going to do this morning. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to talk about Peter. And um, I'm going to start out. Uh, it's a very familiar uh, passage in Peter, uh, in, excuse me, in Matthew uh, chapter 26, the same uh, story. It's the event where Jesus has been taken. Uh, to court, so to speak, by 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 the Israelites, by the uh, and the, I'm not sure. I didn't go back and look at it that in depth. That this, uh, uh, who all was a part of this particular event, but Peter's hanging around outside in the courtyard, and he's he's waiting to see what's going to happen. And uh, do you you remember that uh, at the Last Supper? That Peter had told Jesus, he said, uh, "Well, I don't care if everybody else abandons you during what you know what you're talking about is going to take place." That uh, what did he say? I won't do it. I won't do it. If everybody else abandons you, I will not. I will not abandon you. I promise that I will not abandon you. And so uh, he's got. Uh, Okay, he's got a great, uh, I mean, it's a great thought, isn't it? I mean, do we, do we abandon Jesus? You abandoned him lately? Today? Have you abandoned him today? I mean, that's kind of an on, on and off, on and off, isn't it? We, th- we don't think about that much. All right, so uh, anyway... Uh, I'm going to read, uh, starting in verse 69. Now, Peter was sitting outside the courtyard, and a certain uh, servant girl came to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. Okay, so uh, is Peter suffering here? You think he is? Okay, he's 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 there uh, to see what's going on with Jesus, and I think he probably is suffering on the basis of that of what what's going to be happening. What he's con- he's concerned about Jesus, but uh, now this this kind of jumps out as a surprise. So, do you think he's suffering because this lady asked that question or said or identified him? You think he was? Huh? He's next. Uh, okay, so he denied it. That means he contradicted her. You are mistaken. Ma'am, you are mistaken. And uh, then he said, and when he had gone out to, uh, to the gateway, okay, he's, he's, he's making an exit. When he uh, had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, okay, now there's a testimony uh, to the other people. This man, talking about him, was with Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, now the name Jesus has come up a couple of times. If you if you guys ever uh, start to talk to somebody and you say Jesus, that you will get a reaction one way or the other. People don't either love the name Jesus or they do not like it. It's not, it's not a neutral. Jesus is not neutral. His name is not neutral and He is not neutral. Okay, so uh, uh, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, what's Okay, and what does he do? Again, he denied it, this time with an oath. What does that mean? 
First time he denied it, and this time he's denied it with an oath. Uh, I promise, I promise you that I do not, I do not know him. I promise. He contradicted what she said and said, I promise you I do not know, know the man. Okay, so what opportunities did uh, Peter have here? Well, he's, uh, he's suffering. I think he is suffering having this conversation of having to, of, I say having to, of having chosen to lie. And uh, in Mark, the Scripture says that uh, the rooster crowed. You remember Jesus said, okay, be, uh, before the day's out, I, I can't remember exactly the time frame, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, yeah, Matthew's where we are. It's in Luke, uh, Mark and Luke. And uh, in this one, the rooster had, had already crowed one time. So you would think that uh, if, if Peter was paying attention, okay, Jesus had told him when the rooster has crowed three times, you, you will have denied me. Or maybe it was twice, you will have denied me three times. I don't remember exactly how that went. But basically, the rooster crowing is the, is the bell that uh, says you have denied me. So he's denied him twice, the rooster crowed, and he didn't pay, he didn't pay that didn't ring a bell with him. What happened? You see something different than what I just said? No, that's in Mark. Not, that, is not, that is not in Matthew. I'm sorry, I was not clear on that. That is not in Matthew. It's a, the Scripture says in Mark that the rooster crowed. I'm sorry? Well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So, uh, when I, uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, and again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little later the bystanders came up uh, to Peter and said, surely... You too are one of them. For the way you talk gives you away. Does the way we talk give us away? Okay, that's right. Okay. The way, the way we talk, the, okay, our accent also, who do we talk about? Well, uh, the words he spoke, what happened? They did not give him away, did they? The words he spoke did not give him away. All right, so uh, this time it says that he began to curse and swear. My version says my version says that. And essentially, uh, okay, I do not know the man. Essentially, what that means is, I promise you that I would like to be destroyed if what I'm saying to you is not true. Now think about that a minute. The reason that he's telling these lies about, not knowing, about knowing Jesus, he thinks he's going to be destroyed. He thinks that if he confesses Jesus that he's going to be destroyed. And now he's saying, I promise you that I would. I want to. I want to be uh, set up for destruction. If I'm lying to you, I promise you. So in in a way, he has uh, he has contradicted himself there. I mean, he's afraid of being destroyed, but he says, "I, you know, I want to be destroyed if I'm lying about uh, knowing Jesus." Strange. So, do, uh, what do you think about the lies? Are they getting uh, are they are they getting bigger? I mean, I, okay, there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. Are they? Okay. 
Okay? Yeah, Tim Keller. Must have been recorded. <laughs> Wasn't live, right? <laughs> Anathema, yes. Well, he said where the translation, some of the translations go a little wrong, like mine says, make the church not reflect. And he said the anathema is not a reflection of the church. It includes a reflection. Oh, okay. So he does not do that. So when he says if you use a word and you want it to be reflective, but it's not naturally reflected, you have to put another word in there to reflect it. Naturally, it just does not reflect it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yep. Okay. It's a bigger deal, isn't it? It's a bigger deal if he's... Right. Let him be cursed. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, there's, there's, there are multiple uh, thoughts on that uh, scripture there. That's the first time I've heard that, actually, but that's, I, it does make sense. I mean, I mean, when you think about the grammar, grammatical part of the uh, sentence, then uh, that seems to make sense. Anyway, uh, and now the uh, rooster has crowed. Well, let me, let's back up. When we, when we uh, are inventing a story, is it easier to, uh, to add to the story we've invented? I mean, is the, first, is, the, is the first hurdle the big one? Or do you know? Okay. You know, once I've started lying, you know, it seems like it's easier to continue. What do you think? Okay, this is just opinion. I mean, what? Right, exactly. Okay, so there's two things that happen. They become easier and they become larger. Yeah. I did that the other day, sadly. I'm amazed at how, like, like, uh, Tim said, once the ball got rolling, and the stupidity of it was, uh, I think back, the stupidity of it. I mean, it didn't accomplish anything except make me suffer. And I did suffer because of it. Um, but that was a good thing. There was a purpose for me suffering having done that. Okay, now there's an opportunity. An opportunity. Okay, so, uh, so the uh, rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said before. Uh, the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Okay, so it's the rooster didn't crow three times. The denial was three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Okay, now. He's suffering. Okay, I'm not saying he wasn't suffering before, but Jesus, his eye caught Jesus, and now he's really suffering. Now he's really suffering. And he's suffering, but the one that, the, the basis on which he's suffering is the one that's going to bring relief to him. Okay, what, what uh, this word wept bitterly, uh, it uh, it means it's it's like there's a death that has taken place. So what di what died? What died when Peter told these people, "I have not. I, I don't know this guy. I don't know Jesus." What died? Uh, I think I know what you mean. The fellowship, the relationship did not die, but the but uh, but I know what you mean. The fellow, his fellowship 
his fellowship with Jesus was broken. They were separated because of sin. Okay, that sense what separates us from Jesus, isn't it? Fellowship. And here's going to be an opportunity, an opportunity for there to be reconciliation. And you got, uh, we're not going to talk about that, that whole story, but you know uh, that, uh, that uh, Jesus called him out, he went fishing, and we're not going to get into all that. But Jesus called him out, went to him. I mean, Jesus is always the one of making himself available, right? He's always available for us. Always. And uh, there was restoration for him. So, um, okay, just a couple of points, and we've, I think we've already talked about them. So how easy it is to continue when, we, when we're in sin and how easy it is to continue. Uh, okay, here's, okay, he, what, what other opportunities did Peter have in this situation? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. He had the opportunity. Okay. An opportunity to tell the truth. How about this? That's good. Okay. When somebody starts talking about Jesus, that is an opportunity to what? Do you know who Jesus is? I mean, there they are. You, you're afraid you hang out with Jesus. Yeah, you want to know why I hang out with him? Do you know who he is? Would you like to would you like to know what it's like to walk with Jesus? Opportunity. Opportunity. He's suffering. And somewhere in there he had a he okay, he had an opportunity to begin with before he ever lied. Before he started suffering, he had opportunity. But for sure, once once uh, the suffering started, he had an opportunity. Here's something, uh, one of the commentary or blogs or whatever you call those things that I saw, uh, it said, uh, think about how capable we are of doing the very thing that we say is unthinkable. How capable, how easy it is, how easy was it for Pe Peter to do the thing that he he would never have thought about denying Jesus. Never. And how easy it is for us to do that. To do the thing that we would say, we would, I would never do that. All these rest of these people, if they, if they leave you, I'm not leaving. Okay, he, yeah, he went into, uh, okay. Went into self-focus. So, uh, I had it. Uh, must have been on another notepad. So, uh, Self-preservation. He went into that mode right away. People, what? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So he so instead of being a, a light to these people, he turned the light out. He put he put he allowed them to stay in darkness. And he put himself in darkness. That's awful. That we don't realize that people that people are walking around in darkness. We don't think about that, do we? Do you think? I mean, those people that we were sitting there at the table. You know, I really was not thinking. They're in darkness. Okay, we need to we need to grasp that 
in some ways they're suffering and they don't know the solution. They don't know the solution. Trying to get along in the world, with the world, and that's just, okay, people that do that, maybe they, maybe you get the impression from looking at them that they're doing great, but they're not. The world does not offer any, it's a temporal, satisfying, moment-by-moment moment thing. Okay, so, uh, so anyway, Peter's had, Peter had an a, had a opportunity for uh, evangelism. He had, a, had an opportunity to glorify God. God right there. The Son of this is the Son of God. Annoying. Opportunity to do that. What else did he have? What else do you think he figured out uh, while all this was taking place? What else did he figure out about himself? Man, I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm undependable. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we can be hard on Peter, can't we? What do, what do we have that Peter didn't have? Okay. What, okay. This, you guys know all this. The Holy Spirit. What else? We, okay, we have the, the amount of the Word of God we have that He wants us to got. We got everything that we need in the Word of God. That, I mean, if God wanted us to have something else, He would have given it to us. So, is our responsibility greater or less than Peter's was? Even though, I mean, Peter, you know, he... You know, he right there with Jesus. The same. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. To walk in the light that you have, we, we have. You know, we have a higher wattage bulb than Peter had. That's not an excuse for him, but I'm saying we, if we're not careful, you know, we'll say I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I mean, that's what he said. I won't do that. But we have the Holy Spirit. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Hey, you going to keep doing that? Okay, so uh, so then we t we've already talked about where, uh, you know, that uh, uh, so Jesus ascends. And, uh, of course, Peter saw the empty tomb. He talked to, talked to Jesus after the resurrection. And then the ascension takes place. And then uh, the filling of the Holy Spirit takes place. Now believers are filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, Peter's a new guy. He's a new guy filled with, filled with the Spirit of God. And uh, then uh, Pentecost and uh, what did Peter do? He, okay, he became quite a testifier. Did he become that? The Spirit of God, he allowed the Spirit of God to work through his life. And Jesus already knew all that was going to happen anyway. Uh, so, uh, You remember the story in Acts there uh, where Peter and John and some of those other guys, they're, uh, they're healing people or God's using them that way for healing and preaching and all that. And uh, they get, end up getting put in prison and they got let go and uh, they kept doing it. They got told, don't do that again. They did it again. So this time they put them in prison and... Uh, they're gonna kill. They were gonna kill them. I'm not sure if, uh, how much the Romans were involved in that, but uh, the hierarchy of uh, Israel. So they're gonna kill them, and this uh, guy says, "Don't do that." So they beat them. Okay, Peter was afraid that he was gonna get beat up back 
back that night, the night of the trial, or maybe he killed, for sure beat up. And Peter, said, Peter says they, re, they rejoiced, the scripture says they rejoiced at having been given the privilege of suffering for the name of Christ. You know, when we suffer, we can suffer. And He can be glorified in that. Remember, when, when we're suffering, the thing that uh, one, one of the opportunities is for us to grow closer, allow Him to walk through whatever we're suffering, walk through that with us, and we get to know Him better. An opportunity to know Him better because we're suffering. An opportunity for our lives to uh, be more set apart, if you will, the sanctification process. We, we, as we know Him better, will we not... I mean, I don't think if we know Him better, we can't but help be more formed into His image. The more we know Him, all that stuff works together, okay? Our lives look more like Him the more we know Him, the better we know Him. Do I love Him more? When I, as, as I get to know Him more, do I love Him more? Yes. I mean, how can He love me? And it's unfathomable, but we know He does. It's unfathomable to think that He loves us. So we get to know Him better, get to uh, our lives are changed, because all that stuff, again, because of suffering. So we're going to read some Scripture in a little bit. It says, how should we, you, you, I think uh, my wife said it, how, how should uh, we at, react to suffering? What's the Scripture say we should do? Be thankful. Okay, what else? Rejoice. Okay, so we're going to, uh, well, never mind. That's not, not a great thought there. Uh, okay, so uh, now we're going to go over to one of the letters that uh, Peter wrote. Let's take all this stuff he's gone through. And then we're over in First Peter 4. This time we're in 4. We are in 4. Uh, we're going to start in verse 12 and go through 19. Uh, beloved. All right, he starts this out, uh, chapter uh, 4. Beloved. Who's he talking to? I am in First Peter, I hope. If I'm not, tell me that I'm not there. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved. We good? Okay, Bob says I'm good. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you. Why should we not be surprised? Okay, that is true. Yep. Ja okay. Uh, yeah, James t told us we uh, be prepared for suffering. Peter's told us uh, earlier in this letter, uh, that's what you're going to do. Yeah, Jesus said it. We're going to, you're, okay, that's, that's kind of a, okay, if you told, uh, okay, if you join a football team, you're part of a football team, are you going to suffer? Okay, you're going to practice, you're going to suffer, Right. Okay, so uh, if you told the football team on the first day, okay, guys, we're going to suffer. But there will be benefits for suffering. Now, when we share the gospel with somebody, do we do that? We tell, what? Right. We're going to we'll have something that will end eternal suffering. We don't, you probably don't lead with that either. Uh, but the thing of it is, in some ways, I'm afraid that we don't prepare believers for what we're talking about here. 
Okay, li we're living in a place where we're aliens. Okay? We're not, we're, we're, we should, okay. We, it's kind of hard to be at home if you're in a place that you're not supposed to be. Or that's not where you're going to end up. So, uh, anyway, do not be surprised. Peter, whoever he's writing to, I can't remember now who it was. Uh, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing. Does anybody have a different word there? Trying? Okay, you get, the word suffering will fit in there. Just, just lovely. So, uh, as though some strange thing were happening to you. Uh, okay, suffering is not, uh, testing is not a strange thing. It's not unusual. Um, do we think it's strange when, uh, as believers, that, uh, that we're suffering? I just don't understand it. I'm doing, all the, I'm doing all the things that Jesus wants me to do, and I don't understand it. Why, why am I suffering? I don't get it. Okay, what, what does uh, this testing or suffering, uh, what does it reveal? All right, when you, when you, uh, you it's like uh, alloying uh, metals. When they want to separate the, uh, the impurities out of a metal. Yeah, you, yeah, I know you've heard this example. Turn the fire up, and uh, they usually use gold as an example. You get, you know, you get so much carrot gold. You know, the the purer the gold is, the softer it is. Did you know that? That's beautiful. The closer our lives are to Christ, the softer, in some ways. That's good, isn't it? Softer, that we can be impacted the way God wants to impact us. We don't like it. We don't like, we don't like the heat. Turn the heat down. But it's for our, for our benefit. Uh, let's see. To, but to the degree you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of His glory you may rejoice with exultation. So uh, there's going to be a revelation of His glory. Uh, can, can that also, can there be a revelation of His glory now through our lives? You, do you, can God be glorified through, our, for, through us? Okay, don't forget that. By no means let any of you, uh, whoops, I skipped over. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. What does blessed mean? This is a, uh, okay, right. In so, some, some uh, context, you're spoken well of. Lift it up is good. For the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. By no means let any of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a troublesome meddler. We don't like those troublesome meddlers, do we? Those people that are meddling around in our lives. That's what Jesus does. Actually, it's his life that he's been. <laughs> should be. Uh, let's see, but if any anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not feel ashamed, but in that name let him glorify God. That's what Peter was doing when he was in prison. That they might that they might suffer for him. For it is time for judgment to begin at the house with the household of God. Uh, for it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God, and it begins with us first. Um, 
Okay, there's, a, there's some other scripture there we're not going to get into. Um, but the thing of it is, God, God makes, uh, okay, He judges us too, doesn't He? He judges our lives. The judgment of lost people has different results, but He is righteous. And there is, ju there is justice uh, uh, for lost people that it's a different result. And our lives are judged too. He analyze, at the Bema seat, He analyzes our life. And He's doing that right now. These, these uh, sufferings that we're talking about, these testings, the testings to see where we are, is our life in line with what God wants it to be? If it's not, there, there are consequences to that, aren't there? Are there not consequences when, I, when I'm walking apart from Him? Okay. They're there. Uh, I wrote down, just as God judges the loss, He also judges the lives of the believer. And uh, the opportunity for when we're going through that is to demonstrate faith in the one who is faithful, Jesus. How important for eternity is my life uh, glorifying God right now? Is that a big deal now? Is that important for eternity or is that just a temporal thing? Okay, you know the answer to that. It has eternal consequences. Uh, it'll be important at the Bema seat. I think that's one of the areas that we really fail to talk about how important the Bema Seat is because the Bema Seat is going to be a reflection of what our lives consisted of here on earth. It'll be a, it's, it's going to be an analysis, if you will. God's going, to, God's going to say, okay, well done, well done. That stinks or that stunk, stank. All of that. It's a big deal. If it was not a big deal, he wouldn't talk about it so much. And, uh, okay, well, I need to move along here. Okay, so uh, Peter has received the Holy Spirit, so uh, that's ch that changed his life. We have the Holy Spirit, and our lives should be show the consequences of that. Uh, I was reading a guy, and he said, uh, God is in the process of moving us out of the nursery and into the infantry. Does that make sense? That's what he's doing. I thought, man, that's good. And then he said, the United States is the nursery for believers. Okay, you have to think about that. And then, then we each get to ask ourselves, am I still in the nursery? Or am I in the infantry? What, what is it? God is not honored for me to be in the nursery very long. We better get that. Okay, so this testing, you, know, you still in the nursery or not? You still in the nursery? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so uh, the process this is, a, a, again, I'm sure you know this. Okay, we, we've received Christ as Savior. We're justified, right? We're justified. That's a how many time event? A well, one time event, thank you. One time event. Okay, then a sanctification. How many events is that? Approximately. I'm sorry? 
an infinite, is that the word you used? We don't know. It's different for everybody, right? It depends on how agreeable you are. You know, am I disagreeable or am I agreeable? Am I disagreeable towards God or not? Am I disagreeable? If I'm still in the nursery, I'm disagreeable. Man. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, uh, yes, 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 yes. So, okay, although some, uh, yes, not, I shouldn't say yet. Uh, yes, that's true. We need, we're out of the nursery, we're in the infantry. That does not mean we're generals yet. It does not need, mean that the possibility for us to uh, go AWOL is not there. The sanct we're being sanctified, and then, and then one day glorification will take place. Place. Okay, I'm going to uh, go to Romans uh, chapter 8, and uh, uh, I'm going to go to Timothy, maybe, maybe not. Um, Romans 8, uh, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, we're heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, or in as much as we suffer with Him, or as much as we suffer with Him, in order that we may also be glorified with Him. Are we going to be glorified? All right, we're going to have glorified bodies. What? Anything else? Okay, there are crowns, aren't there? Who came up with that idea? God did. There are rewards for living a life that was pleasing to Him. He told Jesus told all kinds of parables here. Take these, take these uh, mina, minas, and use them. And uh, you know, He gave ten to this guy, or and I gave five to that guy, and. And some of them used what he, he had given, the not Jesus gave them, but the, the parable. Some of them used what they had been given to honor the master. Used properly. And the ones that did that were rewarded for having done that. The ones that did not use what they had been given, oh, the, the guy that didn't do that, okay, he, he, that was not good for him. So, have you? I, I, th I know that there's a, uh, the, our bodies are glorified, but uh, the thing of it is, who gets the credit? Who gets the credit for my, the, if I have lived my life the way that God wants me to live it? Who gets the credit? Right. Ultimately, none of that could have happened apart from Him, right? Now, do you think that, uh, okay, there's a list here of uh, martyrs, right, in uh, Hebrews. A list of martyrs. Why? On the basis of how they lived. Are their lives glorified in a sense? They, cho they chose well. So don't, you know, we, we, okay, am I working for rewards? Okay, rewards are a result. Just like, well, crowns are rewards, aren't they? I mean, he said, if you, if you, uh, a person who is martyred, there's a crown for that person. There's a reward for that person. I don't think the crown, I don't believe crowns are the only, I think just, the you know at the bema seat the acknowledgement by God well done. I, I, okay, I don't. I'm not sure about uh, all of that, uh, but anyway, that's a good that's a good question for another time. As far as uh, mansions and all that, but. Uh, 
the thing of it is, we um, there are certain people that we like to hear well done from, right? Okay, I think we will enjoy hearing well done from Jesus. But he said, he says right here, glorified with him. We suffer with him. He's with us during that suffering. And we'll be glorified with him. But he gets the credit. Okay, we get, okay, there, there's an enjoyment from the believer or of the believer. That's why, why he, they said earlier there, uh, count it all joy when you suffer. Man, this, okay, this is, this, uh, the suffering is a short period of time relative to eternity. Well, that's what, it, yeah, okay, that's, yeah. We are being refined. We are not fine yet, but uh, He is refining us. Yep, no, that's, uh, that's why uh, uh, there's Scripture that say, examine yourself. Examine yourself. To see if you are in the faith. Are you walking in faith or not? Okay, so, uh, and then uh, Paul says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. No comparison. If there's no comparison, how can we keep choosing the one for which there is no comparison for? Why do we do that? Okay, our faith is on uh, in that area in whatever area we fail to do that, make the correct analysis. Our faith is weak, but he keeps he keeps. See, that's the beauty of him walking with us through that through that, the thing we're suffering. Okay, so a lot of times, a lot of times our suffering is on the basis of well, kind of like Peter, his sin is what caused him to suffer there. You know, some suffering just happens. You know. It's just part of living. Some suffering as a result of, uh, of being a, a witness for him. Okay, so we're going to, uh, you don't have to turn here. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 11 to 13, some of you probably got that memorized. It is a trustworthy statement. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. That's a positional statement. If we died with him, we'll live with him. If we endure, we shall always reign, we shall also reign with him. So there's a diff, there's difference there's a difference in dying with him and enduring with him. It doesn't say with him, but uh, okay. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but I believe it's correct. There's a difference in heaven for there's some that will reside with him. And there's some that will reign with him. Have you ever heard that? That there is a difference. And it gets back to the rewards, the rewards thing. And the justice of, uh, of uh, evaluating at the Bema seat the works that, we, that he did, we allowed to happen through us. It's a big deal. Our lives right now are a big deal. They are, have eternal consequences right now. If I start working for rewards, the focus is not on him, is it? It's on me. If I start, if that is my, if that is my uh, central thought, he's the one. That, if my focus is him, though, it's gonna, it will happen. If my focus is on him, if I love him, then my life will more and more demonstrate that. And the and the recon the resolution of that will take place at the Bema seat. Okay. Uh, well, we're we're finished. Is there any questions or comments or uh, 
I just want us to see the opportunities of when we're suffering. It's not a bad thing. Okay, rejoice. Are we going to hand out the, you know, the New Year's Eve stuff? Well, probably, probably not. Well, maybe we will. Maybe that's what we should do. But he wants us to rejoice because the potential of what can come from that is huge for us and for other people. It's huge. Glorifying God. I mean, that's what we were made for, right? He made us to do that. We're doing, we are doing the thing, the, the thing he purposed us to do. I mean, that ought to bring us joy. Anyway, I didn't <clears throat> let y'all ask any questions, but uh, we got one more session, uh, not next week, but in two weeks, on uh, suffering, and then we will no longer uh, allow uh, that teaching. I mean, I didn't say that well. That's not didn't come out the way I intended. You, we won't be suffering any. Yeah, that's. I started to say that, and that, yeah, yeah. So you know. Suffer the little children to come in. Anyway, there you have it. Thank you.